We're here with Patricia Newman, author of Planet Ocean, Why We All Need a Healthy Ocean. Patricia, welcome to ASL 2021. Oh, it's so great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Now, you've covered a variety of environmental and biological topics in your books, from elephant conservation to sea otters to, to Ebola. What led you to the, uh, the subject of your recent book, Planet Ocean? Well, that's a, that's a good question because it's a long, convoluted answer. Nothing's ever easy when it comes to children's books, it seems. I have done two previous books with Annie Crawley, who is the photographer mm -hmm. on Planet Ocean. And um, we did Plastic Ahoy together, where we first met. And then we did Zoo Scientist to the Rescue together, where we took several trips around the country to zoos, interviewing uh, different people, uh, zoo professionals, who were saving animals at their zoo and in the wild. And um, during part of that research process, we got stuck in Denver in a blizzard. And it kind of threw all our plans into a cocked hat. And um, we started talking about, OK, well, what's our next book? And Annie is a, a diver extraordinaire. She adores the ocean. We actually call her a mermaid. She says, if you look closely, you can still see the gill slits behind her ears. But um, we started talking about this book on the ocean. And we were trying to figure out how to approach it. The ocean is a vast place. It's less explored than outer space, which is a mind-boggling fact. And we thought that probably the best way to do it was to use Annie as a guide and tackle three very different but interconnected regions. So it came about during a blizzard in Denver, and we just sort of went with it from there. Now I want to talk a bit about your collaboration with Annie. You've okay. talked a bit about this already. Um, you weren't able to, um, obviously, you weren't able to join her on her dives. So what's, what is the, that process like working with such a you know, wonderful photographer? Because the, the, the book itself, it's a, it's a, it's a lush, beautifully phot photographed book. So what was that collaboration process like with her since you couldn't be there? Well, one of the ex um, uh, regions that we explore is the Salish Sea. Annie lives in Seattle. So I did go to the Salish Sea with Annie and um, meet several of the scientists that we interviewed in the book. I didn't go on the dives with her, but I did meet her dive team. I spoke to her dive team, all those kids that she's teaching to dive and teaching to love the ocean. I met Khalil, who is one of the kids in the book who spoke in front of the New York State Legis I mean, excuse me, not New York State, but the Washington mm -hmm. State Legislature. And um, they also gave me a dive lesson. So I don't know if you're a diver, but the first, the first uh, lesson is usually in a pool. So that's where we were, in a pool. And I learned how to suit up. I learned how to uh, put my regulator in my mouth and how to drop it underwater and retrieve it underwater. I learned how to breathe so as not to suck up all the oxygen in my tank. And that was really important because going forward, then we approached the um, Coral Triangle region and the Arctic region. And I was able to do all of that with an underwater perspective. What is it like to be underwater? What is it like to, to not be able to communicate but be able to hear? and see and touch. Um, I've done a lot of uh, snorkeling and I've done a shore dive on my own, so I'm, ex I'm relatively experienced with the underwater world, but it, it helped having that totally immersive underwater perspective so I could then translate that to students. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk a bit about the book itself. And uh, this is a very basic, broad question, but I think it's one that needs to be asked. And it's right there in the title of the book, Why We All Need a Healthy Ocean. Mm -hmm. Why do we need a healthy ocean? Oh, so many reasons. The ocean is really the engine of our existence. Just sitting here, even though in Salt Lake City, we're not near the ocean, the ocean is providing nearly 50% of the oxygen that we breathe. The ocean makes our weather, even here in Utah. The ocean provides medicines. 
and um, it, it makes uh, world trade possible. It, it, it creates uh, a kind of a platform for the global economy, if you will. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but there are these uh, little uh, plankton, phytoplankton in the ocean, they're algae, and they make all of this oxygen and phytoplankton have been busy doing their jobs about one and three quarter billion years longer than plants and trees on land. Just think about that. Nearly two billion years phytoplankton have been making oxygen for planet Earth before plants um, on land even arrived. So it's really an, an outstanding fact. Um, and the ocean also provides much of the fish, or all of, mo virtually all of the fish that we, that we eat. So many people re rely on the protein that comes from the ocean. Um, recreation, livelihoods, the tourist industry. If you think about it, they're all dependent on the ocean. So without it, not only would we not have jobs and food, but quite seriously, planet Earth would not be habitable. We'd be the moon or Mars. Mm -hmm. Now, how can kids, and most of like their parents, how can they help save our oceans? Is there a good first step that you could recommend for, for, for some of our viewers out there who might want to get involved in ocean conservation? Well, I think the first step is to try to figure out how you are connected to the ocean. I worked with a group of fifth graders recently in Northern California, and they realized that there was a salmon run in their river, in their local river. And after reading about the salmon in the Salish Sea chapter, about how salmon are born in fresh water, migrate to the ocean, and then return to spawn, they did some research on their own local salmon and figured out, ah, yes, they do the same thing. But the other thing that salmon do is when they die, they, their bodies provide nutrients that nourish not just the water in the rivers, but the banks of the river where they hike, the forests that they enjoy hiking through. So the salmon are really making that ecosystem possible. And that was their particular connection to the ocean. For a, a, a child who might not live on the coast, I would suggest learning more about your watershed. When you hose off your driveway or turn on your sprinklers, where does that excess water go? Follow it down the storm drain. I bet it goes out to the ocean eventually, or to your local river, which eventually carries it to the ocean. So learn more about that watershed and figure out how what you do in your house travels to the ocean. Think about all that plastic that's in the ocean. That's a man-made material, and it doesn't belong a thousand miles at sea. It doesn't belong at the bottom of the Marianas Trench. It doesn't belong washed up on the beaches of Indonesia where the little kids in Planet Ocean pick it up every single week because the tides just bring it in, in by the ton. So we have to start making better ecological choices. And that's not just bringing a um, reusable bag to the grocery store. It's about thinking about that barbecue sauce, for instance. Are you buying it in a plastic bottle or are you buying it in a glass bottle? Glass is recyclable, very easily recyclable. The, our, our recycling chain in the United States is pretty abysmal. We say, oh, we're recycling it, but that makes us feel better. Really, what's recycled in the United States is about 10% of what we throw away. Um, so I think if we start making better choices and then also we start holding our legislators and our political leaders and businesses, I'm going to pick on Starbucks as a for instance, uh, accountable, then we will see some changes. Mm -hmm. And finally, since we are here at ASL National 2021, uh, do you have a favorite memory from your childhood about a school library or a school librarian that you can maybe share with some of our viewers? Oh, wow, that's a great question. Um, I, I, remember, I remember sitting in my elementary school library and learning about the Dewey Decimal System. 
And I know, I know poor Mr. Dewey is, is kind of on the outs with some librarians these days. But I remember thinking, um, this lecture is really pretty boring, but if it means I can find whatever I want to find in the library, then I am all ears. You know, I was, I was listening and trying to figure out, okay, where's the history? Where's the sharks? Where's the poetry? Where's, the, where's everything? Because I'm a nonfiction writer, and even as a kid, I was a nonfiction kid. So I thought that the librarian was sort of the gateway to what I wanted to know. Wonderful. Patricia, thanks so much for joining us today. It's Thank you. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.